Hello and welcome to what we learned from game week four. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel using the big red button down below. It helps the channel more than you can believe and we really are trying to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of the year and you can help us make that happen. Go on, it's free. Focusing on this round of Premier League fixtures, we've been treated to a lot of very good football this weekend. First, we're going to be starting with Manchester City's comeback against Crystal Palace. What have we learned from this game? Well, Erling Haaland is the difference. With six goals in his first four games in the Premier League, anyone who doubted Haaland's ability to transition into this league has been proved wrong as he continues to do what he does best, and that is scoring goals when they're needed. Interestingly, Manchester City have struggled against Crystal Palace in the last four seasons, only managing to do the double in one of those seasons, and being 2-0 down after 45 minutes really did start to put the strain on Pep Guardiola's side. However, in the second half, they came out and proved why they were champions in the four of the last five campaigns. With Erling Haaland scoring a hat-trick within 19 minutes, it really did show everyone why Manchester City spent the big money to sign him, and it's starting to look a little bit more like a bargain as each week progresses. There was absolute dominance from Manchester City in this game, recording 74% possession and keeping them at the top of the charts for average possession in the Premier League. Yet again, it showcased Pep Guardiola's ideology and just how good this Manchester City side is, with the resilience and the mentality to come back from 2-0 down. It's looking like it will be another business as usual season for Manchester City, but we'll keep an eye on it as the weeks progress. So secondly, we go from Manchester to Merseyside and focusing on Liverpool's 9-0 demolition of Bournemouth. A record equaling scoreline helped Liverpool to bounce back convincingly after not being able to win the first three games in the Premier League and many pundits believe that Mane leaving was having an impact on this team based on the previous results. However, with Luis Diaz opening the scoring with a wonderful header after three minutes, these fears were put to bed. Goals from Harvey Elliott, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Roberto Firmino and Virgil van Dijk led to a 5-0 scoreline at half-time, just showcasing the dominance that this Liverpool side had on the day. As the second half got underway, the Liverpool team came out and started in exactly the same way that they did in the first, scoring within the first minute through a Chris Meffam own goal following a Trent Alexander-Arnold cross. This was then followed up by goals from Roberto Firmino again, Fabio Carvalho and Luis Diaz scoring again to make it 9-0 at the end of the 90 minutes. Credit must go to Roberto Firmino in this game, scoring two and assisting three. He really did have a 10 out of 10 game, a phenomenal performance for a player that many thought may have had his best days behind him in the Premier League. So what have we learned? Well, we've learned that despite this performance coming against a weak Bournemouth side, Liverpool do still have the quality in their squad that they've showcased over the last few seasons and it's hopeful for many Liverpool fans that this performance is exactly the catalyst they need to start an offensive to get back to the top of the Premier League. Sticking with the Merseyside clubs, we're going to focus on Everton now and I think it's clear that Lampard needs backing otherwise the time could be running out for the Everton manager. Despite scoring the opening goal in their last game, Everton have now failed to win any of their opening four Premier League games. Scraping survival last season may have only papered over the cracks that were starting to appear within this Everton side, as at the start of the 22-23 season, the performances have replicated in the way that they ended the last campaign, with rumoured Chelsea target Anthony Gordon scoring and being the only player for Everton to score this season, the worries surrounding where the goals will come from should he leave continue to be a prominent threat for Frank Lampard. Brentford showed a lot of resolve, managing to score late on to recover a point through Janelt scoring in the 84th minute, and despite both sides creating three big chances, the game would be left with a goal apiece and an unwanted record continuing for Everton, having still never beaten Brentford in the top flight. The signing of Neil Malpe may go some way to replacing the goals that were scored by Richarlison last season, as he managed to score eight and Richarlison scored 10 last year. However, with Calvert-Lewin still to return, I think that maybe this is exactly what Everton need in order to start finding form further up the pitch and to be scoring in goals in which they really need to be doing so. I think more backing is still needed for Lampard to get this side firing in a consistent way this season. So what have we learned? Well, I think we've learned that Frank Lampard does need to be backed in order for Everton to survive in the Premier League this season. And I think the forward line is exactly where they need to be distributing the funds. It's hopeful that Malpe and Calvert-Lewin can combine alongside Gordon if he stays. But I do think that more needs to be done in order to get the side consistently firing up top this season. Moving to Arsenal now and a fantastic run of games 
games and a fantastic run of results is continuing for Mikel Arteta's side. Stretching their winning run to four games, Arsenal are showing very few signs in letting up their incredible form at the start of the season following a comprehensive victory and a strong mental result against Fulham. Following Mitrovic's goal in the second half, Arsenal found themselves a goal behind and really needed to come together collectively in order to get a result. This result did come through in the end, with the first goal of the comeback scored by Martin Odegaard. Albeit fortunate following a deflection off of the Fulham defender, this was absolutely deserved as the attacking momentum shows they were on top for the majority of this game. Following an even higher level of attacking momentum, the Gunners would then go on to win the game with Gabriel redeeming himself for his earlier mistake and poking in a winner following a corner right at the end of the game. What became apparent for me in this game is that Arsenal, despite being so young, showed an incredible level of maturity to remain composed and to come back against a very well coached Fulham side. On top of this, there were also quite a few positives to take following a very strong performance due to Arsenal having 72% possession, 8 shots on target with an XG of 2.52, showing that the chances they took in the end were vital for the win. So what have we learned? Well, Arsenal showed that they do have the mentality to face adversity and to come through it together, which is an incredibly positive sign for such a young side. If these players stay together for a long amount of time, I can imagine there will be some very happy days for Arsenal fans as the seasons progress. Finally, we come to West Ham now, and I think that this result was needed for David Moyes and his side. Emerging victorious against an Aston Villa side that have really struggled to get going this season, I think that the four nows goal for the three points is something that David Moyes will be very happy to have received. Looking at the way in which they played, the first half certainly wasn't vintage by any standards as Aston Villa seemed to dictate the tempo. However, when you don't make your chances count, that's when West Ham can be the most dangerous and this was proven when a long range shot managed to catch out the keeper into the back of the net. So what have we learned? Well with West Ham's season up and running I do think they need to start finding a little bit more consistency and I think they st need to start progressing the play a little bit more up the pitch as they didn't record a single shot on target in the first half. The improvements need to start coming thick and fast for David Moyes' side and this West Ham team need to show what they really are about like they did last season. So moving on to the final part of the video and thanks to Luis Diaz, my FPL team is starting to look a little bit better this week. So who would I recommend you pick for next week? Well, I think due to these games coming very quickly and happening in the middle of this week, I would pick Pedro Neto as due to his price dropping from 5.5 to 5.3, he now becomes a little bit more of a financially viable asset for your Premier League team. I think with the game against Bournemouth coming up and the performance that Bournemouth put in last time out, this could be the perfect place for him to start getting his season underway and could act as the boost that he needs and the confidence should he get on the score sheet. So for me, I think Pedro Neto is your choice for game week five of the Premier League. So that concludes what we learned from game week four. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to drop a like down below. It really does help. And if you do want to see more of this, please remember to subscribe to the channel. Remember, we are trying to hit a thousand subscribers and you can help us make that happen. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you at the end of the week for what we learned from game week five.